Sweet is a nationally known lecturer and frequent presenter for A4M. He is currently in practice in Southwest Florida and was the clinical physician involved in the very first nurse practitioner training program in the USA. He teaches health professionals about the treatment of women in menopause with bioidentical hormones and was a principal investigator for a scientific study of female hormones. He is the organizer of a national summit committee on the treatment of women in menopause with bioidentical hormones and has authored various books including Menopause and Natural Hormones and Happy Healthy Hormones, How to Thrive in Menopause. Welcome Dr. Rosen Sweet. Thank you very much. I am a holistic functional medicine doctor, and it's an honor to be here. And I want to, in 1968, I'm standing on the stage at my, high, my medical school graduation, and the main dean is lecturing to the audience of family, friends, and dignitaries, and we're walking up physician by physician to receive our diploma. And as I'm reaching out to get my diploma, out of the main dean's mouth comes, physician heal thyself. And I start to shake and I start to go down and faint. I didn't make it all the way down to the ground. I managed to collect myself, stand up, take my diploma, and walk backstage because I was shaken up. And I leaned against a pillar and I can see it as I can see you all out here today. I said, physician heal thyself. What does this mean? I didn't learn anything about healing. And I'm afraid I'm gonna to have to be one of those physicians. I went on, well, I'd like to pause for a moment and ask you to do a survey of your life right now. And for those of you who feel comfortable, close your eyes so you can look in and ask yourself, how's your life going? How's your practice going? Are you having fun? Are you earning enough money so that you can go home for dinner and you can go home with a free mind to be there present with the people that you love and care about? How's your journey going? How's your holistic? life going? Are you exercising? Are you doing a really good nutritional program for yourself? We're holistic health care providers. How's, how holistic is your life? And pause for a moment to see if you can connect with your dream of life. What's in it? What matters to you? When you're 80 years old and you're reviewing your life, have you created your dream? Is the path that you're on, current path that you're on going to get you there? And of course, it's so crucial, the many tools we need to live well, to accept exactly where we are right now, to accept who we are, to receive the beauty of what we accomplished and what we're doing, and how blessed we are to be on the front lines of the healing human beings and interacting with them at their most elemental phase. What a gift we are. We'll do as Erica said, just be present and listen just for openers. And if we understand deeply within ourselves that healing is possible, we're gonna communicate that to our patients. Accept everything now is the doorway to being present, being present gives us the opportunity to co-create with the divine. Well, I went on to do a rotating internship and I went right into practice as we moved to Santa Fe with my young family. And I had an office in my home and I was right out of the gate exploring holistic medicine before the name was there. I was, I was getting knowledgeable in nutrition and in herbs. And it was an idyllic picture. And I was embraced by the Santa Fe and the Mexican community. And it was a wonderful picture, but I was being woken up by a phone ringing in the morning, as occurred in those days. And I was going to bed, having answered the last phone call. 
and I had been presented with this wide array of patients that were challenging. And it felt overwhelming to be able to try and put my arms around everything that I was meeting up with. And to shorten the story, years later of doing this day in and day out, and not having the skills and the coming to earth with some challenges internally, although I looked fine, I looked like a young star of a doctor, I was loved by my community, I was not doing well within my marriage. And it came to divorce. And I split up my family with my young son, and it was the worst day of my life. And why would I mention this to you? Because how we're living matters. And that we have that we have a holistic life matters because it can have consequences. Well, as awful as that day was for me, it was also the day that for the first time in my life, I took responsibility that I was the cause. And that there was, I had a journey to do, and I committed to that journey. It took tremendous commitment to make it through medical school. And this was my second major commitment in my life to acquire the information, tools, and support so that I could go on a personal healing journey. Echoes of my graduation ceremony, I now had my first glimpse of what it was that I had to heal. Why do I mention this? We can bring a lot to our patients, and the first thing that we bring to them is what we're present in. And for those of you who embrace and succeed in your own spiritual healing journey, your own physical healing journey, your own life healing journey, you will embody that healing is possible. And it's magical. When they can, you don't have to tell them that. They can feel it. And it's one of the most influential things that we do as physicians. I remember when I was 11 years old and I sprained my ankle and had a high fever and my mother thought on a Saturday that the best thing she could do was disrupt and disturb my Uncle Leonard, who was a general practitioner, and take me in because she was really worried about me. And I was sitting there and waiting for him to come into the exam room, feeling like I could die. I was so young and so scared. And my Uncle Leonard marched in that room and said, Hiya, David. And the smile and what he embodied I instantly knew and felt that I was going to be better. And that was the end of it. And of course, I turned the corner. And everyone in this room, with all the commitment that you have brought to bear on this very day, without another molecule of knowledge, this is a gift you bring to your patients. And especially if you know that healing is possible. Medically, I went on to do what you're doing. I started attending seminars and workshops. And it was a thrill. Knowledge was coming forth in the world of functional medicine that was brand new and it was so exciting. And not only that, I had the chance to meet my colleagues and I achieved so much by listening to the brilliance of what was being spoken on stage and also by sharing cases and being with the doctors. It was, it's such a nurturing experience for our tribe to be together. And you'll learn so much and you'll create allyships and friendships. And many of you know this because you're <laughs> veterans of attending these events. And my knowledge base grew and grew and grew. And my offices got bigger and more interesting. And 30 years later, I have the pinnacle of a certain phase of my practice. I have offices in Naples and Sarasota, Florida. And I was still challenged. I was still working 70, 80 hours a week, and a monumental life turning event took place. Howard, a, a man in his 60s, a patient that I knew very well, came in for a consultation. He had just learned that his sister was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and he was concerned about some cognitive issues that he was having, and he wanted us to go on a journey to see what we can uncover and see if we can do things for him to be able to prevent his decline into dementia. And I had another like medical school graduation moment where I 
felt shocked, and I didn't first understand what was going on. And then I got it. And I said to Howard, almost channeling it, Howard, yes, I do know a lot. I've acquired quite a bit of knowledge about the mind and the kind of issues that take place. I have a lot of tools, I have a lot of instruments, but we need you to be seen by an expert and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna discover that expert for you and I'm gonna refer you, and I did it. And there was something very special about that for me. I felt medically in integrity. I had done the right thing. He needed to be in the, under the care of someone who was doing this as their life's work. And was, was really deeply knowledgeable in the protocols that involved helping heal and healing the path towards dementia. What I was doing over 30 years was trying to be the master of everything. And what I discovered in that moment with Howard that I had not mastered anything. I could no longer get my arms around the whole functional medicine that, uh, knowledge base. And although I felt relief at having done the choice of integrity, I started in my own mind reviewing my roster of patients and that I realized that my cardiovascular patients were best served by going to a physician that was deeply involved with Dr. Houston and others' protocols. And the same for Lyme's disease, because I had a lot of tools to, and IV tools to treat infections and was doing so over the years. So I also felt a tremendous fear. I'm gonna refer away my whole practice. I'm not gonna have an income. Well, there was one thing that I was doing, and it had to do with hormones, that I did know that I was the one to be seeing people on hormones. It takes me back to our traditional training. We were all, I, I took it for granted that there was a path to financial success. And you know, you graduated, you got a paycheck from a clinic or from a hospital or from a group practice, or you went in private practice and you build insurance and everything worked. But when I went right out of the gate in 1970, to go right into functional medicine practice, I discovered that people weren't, the insurance companies were not interested in doing this, and all of a sudden I got launched into the area of business. And oh my goodness, what did I face? What did you all face? The, trip, the world of triple net lease and staffing issues, and inventories and marketing and CPAs and LTVs and ROIs and Lego Vault. There was a real amazing array, and I embraced being in business, and I, I, I assert to you that to have a holistic life, it's very important that we also succeed at the business aspect, so that when we turn the key at our office, it is prior to dinner time each day, we can go home free of mind, knowing that we're building college funds and even retirement funds, we're succeeding in business. So I got interested in business, and my introduction was the four hour work week. Yeah, I was doing 50, 60, 70, 80 hour work weeks at the time that this happened. And yes, this is a moment of deep relaxation, but these were very rare. What I really found was that I was in a complexity trap where I had so many different moving parts to my practice. There was the equipment, there was the inventory, the supplies, the software, the hardware, the staffing issues, the education, and the education of my staff, and God forbid, one of my staff wanted to move on, I had to retrain someone in the extensive part of my practice. My billable hours were going down because I had so many, I was involved in so many different moving parts of my practice, and my unbillable hours were increasing. I was linked to every part of my practice. And should I want to take a day off? Yeah. A week off? Whoa. I was the only income provider and at my overhead marched on and was very challenging to take time off. I felt like I was pushing that rock up that mountain or I saw it at the time. I was a doctor in a hole and I thought maybe this is what a holistic doctor is. <laughs> And I ask you, are any of you in the hole? 
And I know, having attended so many of these conferences, the beauty of who you are right now and what you're doing and what you're bringing to your patients every single day. And at the same time, when, well, let's just pause for a moment. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> I've taken you down the my challenging path. But what I promise you is that I made choices. And if this is relevant for you, and you have the chutzpah and the courage to make choices, you're going to change your life as I changed mine. And a direction that I think is so crucial, I think it's the time for functional medicine 3.0. And what that is, is to become a specialist. Become, become an expert. When I got out of medical school and I watched our traditional uh, comrades, colleagues, going down the path of ultra-specialization, I thought, they don't get it. I mean, you've got to treat the whole person. And, and I'm a holistic doctor. And then many years later, I know that they, are, they made the right choice. And any of you have health issues to face that called on our traditional doctors to further assistance, what do you want? You want expertise. You're gonna go out of your way to find the very best person in the field that you did. And you're gonna be so grateful that they hunkered down and became a living expert and developed a team so that you could get the very best of healthcare. This is one of the remedies, this is my suggestion, is some of you in this room, you choose to become an expert at the multiple uh, possibilities in the functional medicine world. One of the things I did early on in my career is I go, because I decided to do the hormones was my my favorite thing to do. I always loved biochemistry. I thought the steroid path was just so fascinating. And I called together a national summit. I wanted to bring together people who were actually doing great work because our knowledge base, as Erica was speaking earlier, was so lean in the beginning. We had very little to draw upon. And if you look at the front row there and the woman in the blouse, this is Erica Schwartz. He was there. It's in the early 2000s. Jonathan Wright was there, Gene Shippen, Dinah Schwartzbein, Gene Grisco, the president of ACAM, Frank Nard, representing the laboratories, Willie Simon, and some of you know these people, and I invited. I wanted a medical spiritual presence at that meeting because I thought it was so important and so sacred. And I asked Jeff Bland if he would attend that hormones was not his main interest, and he did it. And this was a very sacred beginning. Uh, and I wanna say, take it aside, that we as functional medicine providers, especially the lane that I'm in, we're getting criticized for a lot of different reasons, including monetary reasons, by our traditional counterparts. And many of you know this, and many of you have been on the front lines of this challenge. This is me being invited to speak in front of the committee of the National Academy of Science on Bioidentical Hormones. And oh my goodness, I got to see some of the things that they were claiming, what they're picking to choose on it. And the world of hormones happens to be the wild west. There is no standard of care. There is no board certification in hormones alone. And we're getting picked apart at, at our edges for when people are not experts. So it's a call for expertise. And we're under fire in the region of the intestinal tract and the gut flora, and you know, on and on. Yes, in 30 years, they're gonna all be going, this is, a, this is traditional medicine, but they're not doing that necessarily right now. What's this a call for? It's a call for us to become experts at what we're doing so that the public knows it and the patients are getting the results that they really want. Specialization can solve many issues in practice, the integrity issues. You get expert at something and, you, and your patients are gonna get what they want. You're gonna get better results and they're gonna become just loving fans of what you're doing. And in, in this regard, it's gonna help solve the issues of business and money because bottom line, you need patients. You need to be doing consultations and how do you get them? You need a full and an overflowing appointment book. 
And that's a magical moment. And you need to be spending your, uh, your hours in billable hours so that you can have the cash flow that allows you to have, lead the rest of your holistic life. And specialization can contribute to your well-being because as your appointment book overflows, you get to do a magical thing. You get to start building your team. You get to bring in another provider. And that provider is going to be, because you're an expert and because you're focused, all you need is a, someone who's basically trained in functional medicine, is a good person that you trust because they can be trained up to your specialty pretty quickly because they're not trying to get excellent at all of the body of knowledge of functional medicine. They're zeroing in on your specialty. And when you get that other person, it leads to the, when you get your second provider and your third provider and your fourth provider, all of a sudden you get an opportunity to take some time off because you're developing a team and this is a team sport. That's what medicine is. And it's a glorious way to go because you get to work with people if you properly choose, choose them that you love. And, and, and you're able to take longer times off and your practice is still earning money. I wanna look at it through the eyes of the patients and what they're looking for because they're savvy. And when they have a health issue and they realize they get the opportunity to spend some money and go to the doctor's office, not their favorite sport. They want expertise. That's what they want. They have issues to solve and they want someone who knows how to do it. And they're gonna be looking for experts and when they come across a web page of someone who's listing a menu of possibilities that gives them thousands of things that they can choose from, well, as the marketers say, that confuses the patients and they do not move forward. And they're so savvy these days, they're gonna check you out. They're gonna see what you're saying on social media and what's being commented about you. They're gonna see if you're moonlighting. They're gonna see if you're an expert, you've written books. We got savvy patients that want the right thing. They want success. When you specialize, everything gets simpler. You have less overhead and you get more free time. I remember the day that I gave away all my office furniture and all my equipment and it felt like it was pulling teeth. <laughs> I was kicking and screaming to go into specialization, but I knew it was right. I had been encouraged by my son who said, Dad, we're not seeing you anymore. You're just doing medicine. If you're, when you're if with your granddaughters and babysitting them, you're sleeping and they're laughing about it. You need to specialize. And I thought, my son doesn't understand. You've got, you've got to treat the whole person. And it was, but I knew he was right and I, I did it. And when I turned the key on that second office, because I simplified it, I just did consultations and I was an early um, user of telemedicine. It wasn't called that then. I was just doing video conferencing and I began to realize that the specialty lane that I chose, I was able to do, it lended itself beautifully to doing everything by telemedicine. So long as they had a primary care provider and I did not need to see them in person except for the testosterone exception. And so everything got easier for me. And I really got the distinction between holistic medicine. And what really mattered was that I was holistic and I lived in a way that I could enjoy my practice. I was getting sufficient financial income and I was arriving home for dinner and I was present because I was in a, a practice that was succeeding and easy and very rewarding because patients were grateful. There's various details about being in business, about patient acquisition, and I wanna skip to the five and 10 rule because one of the ways that you're gonna get patients is if you do decent work, they're not gonna tell anybody. But if you do great work, and they get what they want, they're going to tell five people about that. And if you're doing mediocre, or they're having an unbeneficial experience, they're gonna tell 10 people that they had a, 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 an uncomfortable experience. And this research was done way before there was Google and, yep, and reviews. So you could be taken out by social media if you're not doing expert work. 
I'm not going to go through the various ways to get patients of what the marketers say, but what they say is it's very challenging to market someone who's trying to be all things for all people. And it's much more costly to do that. It's much more challenging to get uh, new patients. So the magic is getting more patients opens up this exciting world of being able to get additional providers, having a team, and you get to go on a holiday. And bottom line, physician, what's your dream? What matters to you? This could be a crossroads for you, this conference, where if this is resonating with any of you, you could make a decision to find your lane. You may not know what it is. This is a perfect place to do it. What speakers are really speaking to you? When you walk around the exhibit hall, what stands out to you is your interest, or maybe you already know it. But if it makes sense to you to become an expert, to specialize, then have the chutzpah, have the courage to do it, so that when you're 80 years old and you're reviewing your life, you're going to be able to go, I'm an absolute pinnacle of my life and my career, and there's no horizon in sight. Who would want to stop now? Physicians, heal thyself.